Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well and staying safe. So today we got uh, sort of a follow up to uh, two other videos that I did. So I did a, uh, a live rig rundown of what I've been using with my pedal board. So my pedal, basically my pedal board video. And then I showed you the standard range guitars and all that sort of thing that I use. Uh, today I am going to be showing you my rig that I use for creating my own music on bias effects. So I've got a Mellow Audio MIDI controller down on the floor in front of me. So you'll be able to see the desktop screen in three, two, one, and there you go. So if you can see that there, you should be able to. That is my rig that I use on bias effects for creating my own music. Um, so it's all, I've got it all MIDI programmed. To be honest, that drive pedal there, that I'm hovering the mouse over, that, um, I probably need to delete that because I've not used it. I've not used it in ages and I just don't use it in the sound. So, tune is on at the moment, there's no sound. All the stuff you heard at the beginning was me switching between patches. I just switched between, well, sorry, not patches, my, um, my toggles. So essentially what I've got is, I've got on, I've got one, two, and three as foot switchable things within the sound. Ideally, I would like sort of five or six so I could do the pedal, but I'm working with what I've got here. I could probably make then another rig, exact copy this exact rig, and then make more presets to use for that. So that'll probably be something I do in the future when I need more presets, or I'll just, or Hopefully by then I'll have other gear, possibly a Kemper, which is what I'm looking at getting a Kemper floor unit. So I'll just take the tuner off there. So we've got along here, we've got a poly octave, this drive pedal, this can just get, get gone. Right. So I've got like sort of all these reverbs here um, and stuff at the end. This was like sort of a leftover, I, I stole this patch. And then I've tweaked it to my to my liking. I found a sound that I really liked. Then I tweaked it around and made it for me um, a much better sound. I'm sorry I can't get this bigger for some reason. Bias Effects client is this big and this big only all the time. So this is the default sound um, of the of the rig. So it's literally just. <laughs>
I've been playing that riff a lot <laughs> lately. Um, so that is that's the that's the initial patch. So what I'll do is I'll just show you how that's set. So that's pretty much none of the drive, all the level, and then level there again about just under halfway full tone, and then we're into two ecstasy one oh ones, which are set actually pretty much middle of the road. Most things on two o'clock. They just sort of like those are the amp settings. What I will do is I'm gonna put this. I'll put the part. I'll put the um. The name of it. I'll name it, and then I'll put. I'll put it on the tone cloud, so that if you're interested and if you have Bias Effects One, then you can download it and use it to your heart's content. So, we'll just go along the signal chain of of what's on right now. So, like I say, it's the drive, the boost, the two amps. They're in stereo. Uh, one panning left, one panning right, and then we've got all this at the back. So we've got a gate here. Uh, I've just literally put that on actually, just in the effects loop. It just seems to dampen noise, and then a reverb pedal there set like this. So this is literally just the the normal sort of like riffing tone. Then when I click the number one on my board here. That then changes, that then takes off the two drive pedals, uh, adds in a chorus that I've got set like this, which if you've seen my chorus pedal video, my Marshall chorus, which is down there, it's set pretty similar to that. I've got a delay there, and then this is an ambient reverb. I didn't even know these existed, but they do apparently. So this is what this sounds like, as you heard in the beginning. <laughs> So that's just a, a sort of an ambient clean tone. Two delays and the reverb, which are here. I've not really used, I've not got them set up yet on a patch. Um, I'll probably do that at some point soon. So that is the... You can sort of do all those sorts of swells. I don't have a volume pedal, so I can't do swells very easily. I have to use the uh, the, uh, the old volume knob on the guitar. Next one along, so if I click that again, we go back to our drive patch. Then number two is probably my favorite one um, of all, just because of how, how cool it sounds. Um, so it's an octava, poly octava pedal set like this. So we've got the dry output and then it's on literally minus one octave. That's all I've got in it. And it sounds like this when it's engaged. Essentially, I'm going to be using that to to uh, to boost my signal. So as as you obviously hear, it thickens the sound greatly. So if I was just to play the same chord here, with and without it, so without, and with. So essentially that just thickens the sound and because the band I'm doing is a three piece and um, as I mentioned before on the channel I'm a big fan of Rabia, he used the poly octava to get some of that um, to to thicken his sound because there's only him 
the bass and the drums. So that's the same thing I'll be doing with it when I'm doing that sort of riffing. And then we've got a fuzz, which is set like this. So it's set just a, like literally two, two, and then back there. So that, so clean, like, well, sorry, not clean tone, normal sound. <laughs> So it sounds kind of 8-bitty, it's on the edge of being really 8-bit. So if I was to probably put the sustain right to 10, it would get really 8-bit, I'd imagine. <laughs> And with the sustain on 10, it, well, it sustains for days. So if I just click that again, oh, I didn't save the other settings, great. That's one thing about this. If you click off, let's just delete all that, put that in the loop. I was fiddling with this just before I started the, uh, I started the video so I didn't save it properly. So when you hit your preset again, it goes back to, back to that. Okay, so that is the rig I use for writing my music. Um, not all of it. Uh, I have used, where is it? Number one, maybe? That's Butterfly Valentine, no. Jazz Bosser. It is this one. So I've talked about this tone a lot. I use this to compose drops. My original song, which is out on Spotify now, links down below. <laughs> Bit of plug. Uh, yeah, so I've used it. I use this sometimes as well, just to do, to do the real. If I want to get really, really super ambient, that sounds like. So what you've just heard there are my, are my real, those are those two. I should have prefaced that by saying there's two. There is really one, that, that first one that I showed you, which is up here in, there we go, which is this. Um, and this is the thing that I use most, but I do stray into the Bring Me The Horizon patch, uh, especially when I'm on the strat in those middle, in the in-betweeny tones. I love to play around and get that sparkle. So that is going to be the end of the video there. Thank you very much for watching. If you do want to uh, to download this patch, it'll be saved under... What I'll do is I'll upload it right now, actually. Uh, please log in. Great. Skip ahead. Okay, so I'll upload it right now. I don't even know what to call it. Um, James McDonald Rig. So that's what it's called, James McDonald Rig, up it goes. There we go, presets shared to the Tone Cloud. So there you go, if you do want to want to grab the rig and check it out and play it for yourself, if you've got bias effects, then James McDonald Rig, just search that and you'll be able to download it and play about with it. Thank you very much for watching once again. If you did enjoy the video, then do feel free to hit that like button. If you want to see some more content, then hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.